welcome to Balanced Health. I'm Shirley Rose and this is Joe Costello. You know, we've all been told to visit our doctor for annual physicals, but for many of us, getting regular checkups just isn't a priority. Why is that? And more importantly, what can physicals really tell us about our health and how often should we get one? Well, joining us to explain what physicals are all about and why they're an important part of a healthy lifestyle is Dr. Walt Larimore. Dr. Walt is an award-winning medical journalist and author who's appeared in interviews on many national television and radio networks. And he's also a regular guest here on Balanced Health. Prior to his journalism career, he practiced family medicine for over 20 years, so he's well acquainted with getting physicals. Welcome, Dr. <laughs> Walt. Nice to have you here with us today. Well, we'll be discussing physicals with Dr. Walt in just a minute. But first, Joe Costello brings us this week's Nutrition in the News. Well, guys, we're going to see this week, guys, this is especially good for our female viewers. Healthy diet and lifestyle protect against a wide range of diseases. And new research presented at the American Association for Cancer Research at their 2008 annual meeting show that cancer is no exception. Researchers demonstrate how excessive alcohol drinking could lead to an increased risk of breast cancer, how consuming too many calories may increase one's risk for melanoma, and why with folic acid, timing is everything for colon cancer prevention. The National Institute of Health and the AARP partner to conduct a study on alcohol con consumption and the risk of breast cancer in postmenopausal women. This is one of the largest studies ever done of its kind and it found that alcohol is a substantial risk factor for development of the most common type of breast cancer. Dr. Walt Shirley, who would have thought it? I mean, you know, you, we think of all these things that are not good for us and we hear that alcohol consumption, even one or two drinks a day is supposed to be healthy for us. And right. now we're finding out that even moderate consumption, certainly excessive uh, consumption, especially for females, yeah. is a very increased health risk. Yeah, right. I wish I'd known this when my kids were growing up and I told them to be a <laughs> teetotaler like college, me. Especially yes, through college. Yes, exactly. But one to two drinks a day can actually uh, increase your risk of breast cancer. Had you heard that, Dr. Walt? Are you yeah, aware of that? This is for postmenopausal women. Yes, exactly. Well, premenopausal, that, that connection isn't as strong but it's still there but yeah. take the postmenopausal woman who has a freedom to have a glass of wine per day we know that her major risk factor for death is cardiovascular disease mm -hmm. with cancer coming in second mm -hmm. so now we have a study saying that one drink a day can increase that breast cancer risk we yeah. know that that one drink a day can decrease cardiovascular risk how do you balance yeah. those for most of my patients the decision is going to be Let's not take the risk with alcohol because there's not just the cancer risk, but there's the social risk. Exactly. Whereas, as Joe, as you say on this program so many times, there's so many other ways that we can reduce our cardiovascular risk. That's Very true. good. So, yeah, and, and of course, addiction, you know, is always, mm -hmm. always a risk there. Well, we're talking about physicals today and uh, something that people don't want to get for some reason, especially <laughs> men. I mean, guys, you can't get them to the doctor. But why are regular, say, yearly physicals so important? Well, actually, the main guy that comes to my office is someone who's either been bribed or blackmailed <laughs> by, by a mother wife. or a sister or a wife. And so the federal government's starting a new program called Real Men Wear Gowns. Oh, I you know, love that, it. that we'll get. Just when you thought you've heard it all. <laughs> just just <laughs> like this along. booklet I, I know, Empowering the Naked Patient. Exactly, That's a good one, too. <laughs> exactly. But Great. how often should you have physicals? It varies. It can vary from every two to three months mm. when you're a little toddler oh. all the way to every Every five years in middle age and then back down to every year when we get older okay. so it's based upon our gender our age and our risk but the data could not be more clear that physicals help healthcare professionals find diseases long before they've had a chance to progress or become potentially fatal mm, so it's very important prevention right what's that old ounce of prevention is worth yeah. a pound of cure there's such a wide range you, you hear about physicals and some doctors will have you sit on the table, they'll do a little bit of this, they'll check in your ear, check in, tell you to breathe, take your blood pressure, and then the physical's over. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other ones will set you up with a, um, you know, a heart scan, uh, maybe, even, maybe even a stress test, a, a, a complete rectal exam, um, especially and for especially prostate blood if you're work. a male, complete and, blood work. Yeah. What, what's, what's too much, what's not enough? Great question, Joe, and it's one that doctors debate. And so Congress founded a group called the United States Preventive Services Task Force. Hmm. And that group's job is to look at all of the evidence and decide what is best for men and women of different races at different ages. And so the answer is that for each of us, the amount of, of the exam and how much blood tests we should have and what other screening tests we should have 
varies upon our age and our gender. But one of the things, Joe, and you pointed out on this program from time to time is that when doctors own equipment that does screening, mm. they tend to recommend it a little bit more. They got a dog mm. in the fight, if you would, okay. you know, and so they tend yeah. to recommend it, even if there's no evidence that it may work or may okay. not work. Interesting. Yeah, human is human, you know. Well, one of the things that there's, we're seeing a lot of now are these virtual tests. Well, the heart scan, it's a virtual test in a sense, it's not mm -hmm. invasive. I've heard a lot of controversy on the virtual colonoscopies and their accuracy. Because um, colonoscopy is not a pleasant thought. No. A virtual one is certainly more pleasant. Can you comment briefly on the accuracy of those virtual colonoscopies? We get a lot of inquiries at that at Kylea, by the yeah, way. Yeah, great question, Joe, because colon cancer is one of the most preventable right. of cancers. It's one of the most common cancers, but it's right. one of the most preventable if you find those polyps early and remove them. Well, why do people not go through the colonoscopy? Because it is an expensive test and it requires that preparation and it requires time and it requires the sedation, right. it requires a whole day off. So there's two tests coming down the pipe that may make that screening test much easier. One is a test where you just dab the stool for a genetic test that mm. tests for those early cancer cells. Now, huh. that's not in production yet, or it's not available, mm -hmm. but if that comes, that's gonna make it really easy. In the meantime, virtual colonoscopy, the research on it has reached the point now that the American Cancer Society says it should be an option for guys and gals our age to consider, and when I turned 50, I actually entered a clinical trial where I had the virtual colonoscopy. Surely the prep was easier than the traditional okay. colonoscopy Good. prep. The test itself only took about 50 seconds with wow. no sedation, wow. which was wow. nice. Oh, I like it. Even I have 50 seconds to spare. Less expensive, <laughs> less expensive, but some downsides. Number one, it doesn't view the small polyps. That's okay. probably okay, okay because they're, they the, slow growing anyway. they're the safer yeah. ones. Number two, if they find a polyp, then you have to have the colonoscopy to have it removed. Okay. So when I did virtual colonoscopy for myself, I chose a center that had a gastroenterologist on standby That's so good. that if they found a polyp, then boom, I'm able to take care of well, it at the know, same time. If it would make more people do it, it's great because I know my husband 20 years ago had a colonoscopy, no symptoms or anything, just had it and found cancer, so it saved his life. You know, back to the physical still, I don't know if we want to bring, I could be the textbook child here, or the poster child here, but <laughs> I, I actually had a physical. I, it was a year and a half later uh, than from my last one, mm -hmm. and I noticed some elevated levels that I would ha not have known. So is this like a good reason that you should get them, Dr. Walt? I mean, I, my cholesterol was a little high and my potassium was very high, which was interesting. I'd like to, yeah, Dr. Walt to comment on that because number one, I think we, we all, one thing we always want to do is educate our, our people here, not just on the mainstream stuff that they always hear, but on taking control of their own health. Uh, one thing we always advocate to people is that you go and you take a blood test, if a reading's off, the first thing to do is remain calm, you know, maybe you check it again, yeah, right? I mean, exactly. in this case, we'll, we'll cut to the chase. They had it checked again, and Shirley's potassium mm -hmm. was normal. So, mm -hmm. first thing to do is not get crazy, right? Absolutely. It, and it's wonderful to get those reassuring tests. Right. But the abnormal ones, if confirmed and if accurate, allow us to find disease that is e earliest and easiest to treat. Diabetes, for example, we can see it on blood tests mm. years before symptoms mm -hmm. show up with the lipid profiles and particularly some of the more refined lipid profiles that are now being recommended, we can see concerns a long time before heart disease or a heart attack show up. You talked about some of the cardiac calcium imaging tests that can show disease long before symptoms show up when people can still do those easy nutritional exercise interventions right. that make so much sense that they may have been putting off but then that screening test will give them that early warning mm -hmm. that now it's time to do something to, to take care of yourself. If it's so important, why do people put it off? Are they afraid of what the results will be? Why do you think people put it off? The studies looking particularly at women show that most women don't. They tend okay. to be acculturated early on, early after they're married, getting those annual visits. And so for them it becomes kind of a networking, nurturing, take care of myself, take care of the family type thing. For the guy, you know, the independent testosterone driven well, guy, you know, we're gonna kinda take care of ourselves and not take care of something until it slams us in yeah. the face. Well, which is why women are such an important part of our lives in getting us true. to the doctor. Oh, I think it's just all that women are smarter than men. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole nother show. <laughs> yeah. For more information on physicals, go to TLN.com, click on shows and then balanced health. 
or to get a copy of today's show, give us a call at the number on your screen. And up next, is it always necessary to take statin drugs if your cholesterol is high? We'll tackle that question and continue our discussion about physicals when we return, so stay tuned.